This is the first step in creation. God, the Father, is thought. Your thought is the parent, which gives birth to all things. The first law is that you can be, do, and have whatever you can imagine. The second law is that you attract what you fear. Emotion is the power which attracts. That which you fear strongly, you will experience. An animal knows immediately if you are afraid of it. Plants respond to people who love them far better than to those who couldn't care less. None of this is by coincidence. There is no coincidence in the universe. Only a grand design, an incredible snowflake. Emotion is energy in motion. When you move energy, you create effect. If you move enough energy, you create matter. Matter is energy conglomerated, moved around, shoved together. If you manipulate energy long enough in a certain way, you get matter. Every master understands this law. It is the alchemy of the universe. It is the secret of all life. Thought is pure energy. Every thought you have, ever have had, and ever will have is creative. The energy of your first thought never dies, ever. It leaves your being and heads out into the universe, extending forever. A thought is forever. All thoughts congeal. All thoughts meet other thoughts, crisscrossing an incredible maze of energy, forming an ever-changing pattern of unspeakable beauty and unbelievable complexity. Like energy attracts like energy, forming clumps of energy of like kind. When enough similar clumps crisscross each other, run into each other, they stick to each other. It takes an incomprehensibly huge amount of similar energy sticking together to form matter. But matter will form out of pure energy. In fact, that is the only way it can form. Once energy becomes matter, it remains matter for a very long time. Unless its construction is disrupted by an opposing or dissimilar form of energy. You should now better understand how people of like mind can work together to create a favored reality. The phrase, wherever two or more are gathered in my name, becomes much more meaningful. Of course, when entire societies think a certain way, very astonishing things can happen. Not all of them necessarily desirable. For instance, a society living in fear inevitably produces in form that which it fears most. Similarly, large communities or congregations often find miracle-producing power in combined thinking. And it must be made clear that even individuals, if their thought is amazingly strong, can and in and of themselves produce such results. Jesus did this regularly. He understood how to manipulate energy and matter, how to rearrange it, how to redistribute it, how to utterly control it. Many masters have known this. Many know it now. You can know it right now. This is the knowledge of good and evil of which Adam and Eve partook. Until they understood this, there could be no life as you know it. Adam and Eve, the mythical names you have given to represent the first man and first woman, were the father and mother of the human experience. What has been described as the fall of Adam was actually his upliftment. The greatest single event in history of humanity. For without it, the world of relativity would not exist. The act of Adam and Eve was not original sin, but in truth, the first blessing. You should thank them from the bottom of your heart. 
For in being the first to make a wrong choice, Adam and Eve produced the possibility of making any choice at all. The laws are very simple. Thought is creative. Fear attracts like energy. Love is all there is. Love is the ultimate reality. It is the only, it is the all. The feeling of love is your experience of God. In highest truth, love is all there is, all there was, and all there ever will be. When you move into the absolute, you move into love. The realm of the relative was created in order that I might experience myself. This does not make the realm of the relative real. It is a created reality you and I have devised and continue to devise in order that we may know ourselves experientially. Yet the creation can seem very real. Its purpose is to seem so real we accept it as truly existing. In this way, God has contrived to create something else other than itself. In creating something else, namely the realm of the relative, I have produced an environment in which you may choose to be God, rather than simply be told that you are God, in which you may experience Godhead as an act of creation rather than conceptualization, in which the little candle in the sun the littlest soul can know itself as the light. Fear is the other end of love. It is the primal polarity. In creating the realm of the relative, I first created the opposite of myself. Now, in the realm in which you live on the physical plane, there are only two places of being, fear and love. Thoughts rooted in fear will produce one kind of manifestation on the physical plane. Thoughts rooted in love will produce another. The masters who have walked the planet are those who have discovered the secret of the relative world and refuse to acknowledge its reality. In short, masters are those who have chosen only love. In every instance, in every moment, in every circumstance. Even as they were being killed, they loved their murderers. Even as they were being persecuted, they loved their oppressors. It is what every master has done. This example and this lesson has been laid out so clearly for you time and time again. Over and over has it been shown to you through all the ages and in every place, through all your lifetimes and in every moment. The universe has used every contrivance to place this truth before you, in song and story, in poetry and dance, in words and in motion, in pictures of motion, and in collections of words which you call books. From the highest mountain it has been shouted, in the lowest place its whisper has been heard. Through the corridors of all human experience has this truth been echoed, love is the answer. Yet you have not listened. I will say again, love is the answer. I will tell you again here, will you listen now? Will you truly hear? I have heard the crying of your heart. I have seen the searching of your soul. I know how deeply you have desired the truth. In pain have you called out for it, and in joy, unendingly you have beseeched me. Show myself, explain myself, reveal myself. I am doing so here, in terms so plain you cannot misunderstand, in language so simple you cannot be confused. In vocabulary so common, you cannot get lost in the verbiage.